in those few uh, first months, we were able to do all of these major stream upgrades. I mean, I started with the cell phone and my tripod was a Pringles can. So wow. when you're already seeing that kind of um, support from a community, that for me is success. Not necessarily that we were able to apply for partnership and get a little mm -hmm. check mark next to our name, just this opportunity to engage with the community and build a community and people are interested in being a part of that journey. Uh, that's when I realized it was working for me. And I think it only took a few weeks before I'd committed to, I'm going to be here three days a week. Sometimes we're learning a new instrument. Sometimes we're songwriting, but mm -hmm. it was just this opportunity to really um, build friendships internationally in a way that I would never have as an mm. independent touring musician. What's going on? Welcome to the new music business. I'm your host, Ari Herstand, author of How to Make It in the New Music Business. The book, third edition, now available. Go pick it up wherever you get your books, local bookstore, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, any of that, hardcover ebook. Go grab the book. You can find, you can visit book.ariestake.com to learn more about that. Or just go pick up the book and, and tag me and let me know what you think of the new edition. Uh, it's very new. Today, my guest is Danielle Allard. She is a musician who is very successful on the live streaming platform Twitch. She's actually making a very good living live streaming as a musician on Twitch. And this entire episode, we talk all about how she does it. And if you're not familiar with Twitch, don't worry. We break down all of the terms and uh, I, I kind of play dumb through most of the interview to make sure that, you know, when she throws out some of these these terms and uh, gets to the process, we kind of we stop and, and we we explain everything. So if, if you really are completely unfamiliar with how Twitch operates and what's possible there well this could be the episode for you and if you also are a professional live streamer as well you're going to learn a lot from danielle she has um, almost twenty thousand followers on twitch and also hundreds of subs subscribers that means hundreds of people that are paying her five dollars a month to subscribe to her twitch channel not to mention the patreon subscribers that she has in addition and just what she's receiving uh through each live stream that she every stream that she goes live on on the platform i was tuning in and oftentimes she'll get thousands if not tens of thousands of people tuning into her live streams and there's multiple ways that she is monetizing that and we talk all about that throughout the episode danielle is an official twitch partner that means she's got that check mark and she's able to monetize at the highest capacity and she also gets featured on the twitch homepage quite a bit enabling her to get those tens of thousands of of streams and and she mentions how she has gotten up to 19,000 concurrent viewers at one time. Yes, uh, a stadium or excuse me, an, an arena's worth of viewers in one moment at one time uh in that stream she had over 800,000 total people that saw that stream. You know, and she talked about everything in between. Most streams it's like maybe 100 some but some are thousands and all of that. We break down the community of Twitch and uh, where these people come from and, and how that all works, how she got involved with it, what Twitch has been like since the world opened back up because she started over COVID and then uh, how it's been over the last three years. So if live streaming is interesting to you, if Twitch is interesting to you, this is the episode. Check it out. You can find Danielle on Twitch, Twitch dot tv slash danielle allard uh you can also just search her name on twitch she's also on instagram youtube um and spotify and everywhere else musicians are just under danielle allard you can find all of us that make the show happen at ari's take on instagram tiktok and twitter you can find me at ari herstan on instagram and Visit ariestake.com to get on that email list. That's where we send out all the most important information about the new music business. This is also where we send out opportunities. So head over to ariestake.com, get on that email list. And if you could just pause the show right now and leave us a five-star review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, that really helps. And if you haven't subscribed to the show yet, click that follow button, click that subscribe button, make sure you get all the new episodes in your feed. All right, let's kick into the show. Danielle Allard, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Ari. I mean, you, you hear about the podcast and all the music conferences <laughs> and things, and now yeah. here, here you are. I can see your face. This is magical. 
I can see your face, but I can also see about 5,000 dinosaurs uh, all spread out. And so for those of you that are just <laughs> listening and not watching this and, and don't get this magical visual that I'm getting right now, uh, I might encourage you to even just pop on over to YouTube and, and see uh, what I'm seeing because this is pretty spectacular, Danielle. Can you um, can you just like Explain the the dinosaur thing, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that seems to be at the forefront of most of my conversations these uh -huh. days. Um, but I mean, the 5,000 dinosaurs that you're seeing very close to the camera right now yes. are, actually represent Twitch subs. So when I started my online streaming journey as an uh, independent musician, trying to figure out how to, we all use that word five million times, pivot. Yep. Uh, what do you do when all your shows are canceled? Um, mm. Start streaming on the internet. And for me, a Canadian musician, right now it's December, it's very cold outside. <laughs> Convincing yeah. people to leave their houses, even mm -hmm. for a $5 cover, it's near mm. impossible for six mm. to eight months of the year. Yeah. So going into a space like Twitch and having so many people just interested in here's five dollars, good luck with mm. your music journey, that mm. was so mind blowing to me that anybody in this vast space of the internet wouldn't want to spend five dollars on a musician. So yeah. I I got a single jar of dinosaurs and I said this is gonna last a lifetime, and now there's a bowl. <laughs> now there's a bowl. There's I think bowl. I feel like this is a metaphor for for uh, for for a music career right here, and there's and life in general, and um, mm -hmm. I maybe all of our muses, but um, yeah. So so is that? I, I saw that. I believe you had uh, eight eighteen thousand five hundred. Uh, is that correct? Twitter, Twitch, excuse me, Twitch subscribers and um, Twitch subs, as the as the slang goes. Uh, so is that you have eighteen thousand dinosaurs in that bowl right now? No, no, no. And okay. I think that's the the concern and, and, and trying to take on all of these new platforms as a musician, yeah. right? Is you go to YouTube and a subscriber is a follower, right? And oh, so let's to... explain for the people yeah. what the difference is here. Inverted. So when you head over to Twitch, it's going to be follows. So the 18.5K milestone we just hit, which is huge and very unexpected, yes. Yes. are people just following the channel. I definitely did not fit 18,000 dinosaurs in this pool. I did. No. You know, I, I was never good at one of those games of like, guess how, how many, many jelly beans are in, are, in the, are, in the the, are in the jar. But like, I'm like, I don't think I, I would not have gone to the 18,000 mark. So that's why, you know, because that's the public number. But this is good because, um, you know, uh, and and I'm going to challenge you, Danielle, throughout this mm. because um, a lot of people listening to this are not very familiar with the inner workings of Twitch. And, mm -hmm. you know, you're on there every day for hours a day. Um, I believe I saw a stream that you did like eight hours long and maybe, and you even mentioned like yesterday we were together for 16 hours. I'm like, how is that even possible? Do you sleep ever? <laughs> but <laughs> um, so, but, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you uh, mm. and I'm going to be interrupting you a lot uh, to ask you to clarify certain terms. Like you mentioned Twitch subs. I let the first mm -hmm. one slide. Um, but, but from here on out, I'm going to challenge you to explain a lot of these terms, um, mm -hmm. you know, that we're going to get into because there is a whole lingo within the Twitch community that doesn't really exist outside of Twitch. And I think that's so fascinating. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> so before we get into the difference between subs and followers and mm -hmm. emotes and bits and all that crazy stuff that we're going to explain uh, later on, um, I want to back up a little bit. You mentioned you had to pivot and figure out um, start of COVID what you're going to do. Uh, take me back to that that time period. Or when did you get started on on Twitch, and what was that decision like for you, and 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 why? And and tell me like where you, what you were doing, you know, just before that, and kind of set me on the, this journey a little bit. So secretly, not so secretly, by day, I'm actually a professor at a local college. So that's cool. my main thing. Awesome. And I was always doing music, I mean, my whole life, and a lot of charity. So the vast majority of my gigs pre-2020 were community events, charity mm -hmm. events. And one that was planned in March 2020 was for my students. Um, one of the programs that I teach in, I teach across many different programs, music to share arts, mm -hmm. performing arts, and public relations. And my PR students were trying to raise money for a really important local charity. 
running an event event is canceled and they'd spent a good two months just all of their hard work all of their heart in that event just Mm -hmm. everything canceled within within that 48 hour window that we all experienced and i said okay you know what i'm not dealing with this well and i feel like nobody is but i'm gonna find a way for us to still be together Mm -hmm. and we were supposed to have this fun open mic night and i said okay i'm gonna press these buttons on facebook and instagram that say go live and then we'll all be together and it will be fine Mm -hmm. and what i've usually done at a lot of these events too is bring free art supplies because i really just believe in the importance of art in every single person's life Mm -hmm. and we did art night for years and years didn't matter if i was playing at three o'clock in the morning at a bar or if i was playing at a gelato shop we were making crafts and just bringing that model to this online space like this is Mm -hmm. probably the hardest uh, thing we're going to have to deal with in our lifetime um, mental health wise going into that lockdown so let's make art on the internet and see what happens Mm -hmm. and it wasn't until a couple of months later that i actually went live on twitch for the first time and mostly for curriculum development it's like how do i walk into a zoom classroom and teach stage performance or stage performance and what that's going to look like eventually one day when Mm -hmm. i'd have been having so much fun in platforms like facebook and instagram and youtube Uh, why wouldn't i bring that tiny little bit of hope that i'd had over the last couple months to the classroom so if we're going to talk about stage performance how can we learn integrating tech into that a little bit more so Mm -hmm. i started on twitch in may 2020 just to press some buttons and see what they do and the rest is now uh, dinable history. <laughs> <laughs> dinable history. So um, tell me about the journey. So May 2020, um, what were your first few streams like? What were your first few months like live streaming? Uh, did you instantly see success? Were people flooding your live streams? You're like, wow, I go live one time and here's thousands of people that are watching me because it's the internet. Tell me how the, the mm-hmm. journey went. What was the experience like? I don't know. I mean, there might be cases in which there are suddenly thousands of people. I think it's always a grind for anybody who's going to do this. I'm live three days a week. And I mean, there were significantly more new people in the space that is Twitch than were on Facebook and Instagram. And, you know, we're all battling those algorithms and trying to have our music cut above the noise. And so my first stream on Twitch, all of a sudden there were people I didn't know, which was very Mm. new for me. Everybody who had been to any of my streams prior to that on different platforms I knew every single one of those people in real life they Mm -hmm. bought albums for me from my value village suitcase Uh, Mm -hmm. so having new people there was huge and um, my trajectory was definitely not planned and and very sudden and so we found that within three months we had already hit that kind of hundred average viewers per stream to be able to apply for a partnership Um, and that word in in different platforms also means very different things what does that Uh, mean apply for partnership yeah um being able to uh, apply for kind of that that final step in your twitch journey um we can talk for days probably about all of the different words and things like being a twitch affiliate mm-hmm. hitting those certain milestones to be able to monetize your channel uh being able to apply for partnership kind of gives us that verified badge that you see on on different okay. different platforms uh, and gives us uh, different opportunities like those front page rotation streams so when you're talking mm-hmm. about thousands of people being there Typically, you're not going to pull that on your own out of nowhere as a musician streaming, um, but you can have those opportunities through front page features and things like that. And you said that that comes when you get to about 100 average viewers per stream? Yeah, the aim, Mm -hmm. I mean, the milestone, they're usually looking for 75 average viewers, but you always want to kind of overshoot those expectations when you're applying for partnership, even in spaces like YouTube, right? You don't want to just kind of hit the minimum. Uh, You want to try to go above and beyond that and then make a really strong application. So let's talk about uh, the levels of, um, so you said it took you three months to become a, a partner? Six months in full. Six months. Mm -hmm. Okay, six months to get to that partnership status. But on the way there, what were some of the other milestones that you were reaching uh, where you realized, uh, okay, this is kind of working? Maybe. Um, definitely uh, everybody who's able to hit that affiliate, being able to monetize okay. is huge. So when you're hearing mm. words like bits, that's a word you used at the beginning of the yep. 
of the conversation, things like subscriptions, um, thinking about that word more so like your Netflix subscription, like you're paying mm -hmm. for a subscription to a service, mm -hmm. to a channel. And so that's something you're able to offer in that space. Um, that, that kind of gamification of viewing, uh, that was already huge. So just in the first few weeks, all of a sudden people were donating to the stream. People mm -hmm. were cheering bits, which is that internal Twitch currency. People were subscribing, which is uh, $5 USD. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that varies country to country internationally. But that was already huge for a little independent musician. The fact that mm -hmm. anybody was willing to spend that $5, it was going to give them a dinosaur and tell them, yeah. like, you're now in charge of all of these instruments and these buttons and this stream cool. wouldn't exist without you. So already in those few uh, first months, we were able to do all of these major stream upgrades. I mean, I started with the cell phone and my tripod was a Pringles can. So wow. when you're already seeing that kind of um, support from a community, that for me is success. Not necessarily that we were able to apply for partnership and get a little mm -hmm. check mark next to our name. We're seeing on on platforms right now yeah. <laughs> how quickly the meaning of that check mark can right. change. <laughs> um, but I think yeah. just this opportunity to engage with a community and build a community and people are interested in being a part of that journey, uh, that's when I realized it was working for me. And I think it only took a few weeks before I'd committed to, I'm going to be here three days a week. Sometimes we're learning a new instrument, sometimes we're songwriting, but mm -hmm. it was just this opportunity to really um, build friendships internationally in a way that I would never have as an mm. independent touring musician. I love that you started, because uh, what I'm looking at right now is an extremely professional setup. And before we started recording, you were showing me the different <laughs> angles of all the various cameras. Do you want to just like click through some of these things that you're showing? Yeah, look at that. Okay, so now we have you in the bottom left-hand corner, this little circle in the bottom left-hand corner, and I see a camera uh, that is from the back side, uh, is like from the back of the room. Uh, at the back of your head, and I can kind of see me in a little box. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, you have gallery view on right now with the Zoom. Okay, interesting. You have a couple monitors. I like to see everyone. It's great. So <laughs> nice. Um, and then you have a bouquet of flowers. You have some bongos there. Um, and then what else? You, um, I, I think you. Oh, and you have a great light right there. I love seeing this setup because that's the front uh, <laughs> light. It is um, cool. So when you first got started, though, uh, you were saying. Um, you start, oh, there's the top view. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, you were uh, saying how much you enjoy seeing the setup. And for I me, that's this. so important too. And something I have uh, in my panels below the stream as well in the information mm -hmm. section is a list of all of the gear that I use cool. because getting started is so overwhelming and scary. Yes. And what I love about the Twitch music community is that so many people know each other. So many people are such close friends. It's really this culture of giving and helping. Mm -hmm. So you'll find a lot of those gear lists, how people have set things up. So the only awesome. way I was able to do all of these upgrades was with gear lists and with the help of people within the community and mm. through the generosity of people stopping by the stream. So I know a lot of people don't want to start until they kind of have a setup that looks like this. And there's no yep. way I could have afforded a setup that looks like this right. um, without without having gotten started and, and having people believe in, in me and, and the music. So let's talk about that a little bit, because um, I, I think it is important for people to remember, and you touched on a great point, that uh, you didn't start with this incredibly fancy setup. You started with the Pringles can tripod in your, in your <laughs> iPhone, um, which is great. Um, I'm assuming those first few weeks, first few months, I mean, you said you set a schedule or you knew you were going to do three times a week. How did you, um, what motivated you to keep going even after I'm sure there were some streams where maybe there was just a trickle of people here and there, a handful, maybe two, three, four, five people, I don't know, uh, maybe mm -hmm. zero people. Like what, in, like what motivated you to just keep it going? The people. <laughs> Okay. I mean, there were some things on my to-do list as a musician for years. And what I do a lot of now when we're live is live looping. And I picked up this pedal six years before I started streaming. I tried so many times to motivate myself through the pains of learning that process. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was just so frustrating to me. But I would go live. I called it office hours. I wouldn't even stream in the music category because I was so 
scared. I was like, huh. this is going to be terrible. And sometimes when I was learning brand new instruments and things in the beginning, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd stream into the just chatting category. It's like, no mm -hmm. one find me. <laughs> yeah. But the people who had already followed, they were getting notifications, they were coming by and they were saying, I'm working on this project. It's like, that's really motivating because then I'm going to work on this project. And they were just mm -hmm. there for the learning. They were happy cool. to see uh, the learning happening. They were happy to see all of the wrong buttons and kind of celebrating those moments. Cool. And so knowing there were people in there at a certain time expecting me to go live, that pressure was really, mm. really helpful for me. So I already knew, I mean, I'm immunocompromised. I have not done very much in the last few years. I've been okay. um, very isolated and probably for the mm. first two years didn't leave. So there was that part of, well, what else am I going to do yeah. <laughs> other than yeah. my day job? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But having that motivation of like, you know what, I'm going to get through my list of things to do. And at the, at the same time, probably meet some pretty cool people. And that was because the goal. That's, that's great. And that, that is a thing that I, I find so encouraging about, uh, Twitch in particular. Um, but I guess live streaming overall, but 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 more so I find on Twitch than any than than live streaming on any of the other platforms. Um, I'm not a Twitch. I'm not an avid avid Twitch streamer or viewer to be honest. Um, I kind of an an, an admirer from afar uh, mm -hmm. and a student um, of everything to understand them all. But what I have admired about about Twitch and uh, specifically how you use it um, is that. Uh, it is so interactive and you use the word mm. early on as gamification and and twitch has done a really good job of the gamification of the of live streaming but when you mention like oh the people have stayed with it because i think every musician at the start of covid tried to you know went live on instagram and that was a thing and when you'd open instagram you'd see those mm -hmm. bubbles of uh, their so-and-so's live everyone was live at the start of instagram and and by the nature of just how Instagram functions, uh, people would stay on for seconds on somebody's mm -hmm. live stream and they'd make one comment and then they dip. And with Twitch, we find that people stay on for hours oh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, even if you only have a few people in there, like they are with you, they have committed. Yes. Talk to that a yes. little bit. I'm so glad that you brought that up because it really speaks to the culture in different platforms yeah. and moving from a space like Facebook and Instagram. And when I'm working with my students, when I think about tech barriers in places, there's a lot of technical barriers when you're a performing musician, even just trying to do your stage show with a chat at, at first. That's yes. just a very overwhelming experience. Sure. So I'll normally have them in a space like Instagram. There's not a lot of new traffic. It's very mm -hmm. safe for your first stream. Mm -hmm. And people are expecting to scroll that's what they're expecting to do in that space right. they're just going to keep scrolling forever and twitch i mean it's designed for gamers so then when you mm. think about how how well um they've kind of planned out things like channel point redeems where people can really impact the content i think that's what keeps people there for so long as well and i know when i was having all of my my friends back in 2020 wanting to make that jump from facebook and instagram to a space like twitch asking mm -hmm. questions i had tons of friends that did their very first twitch stream and i think a lot of people are expecting to be able to take their live show like i do my 45 minute set on stage mm -hmm. i just bring that and i do that same thing online and then they'd find that they don't like it. So I don't, right. I don't like, I don't like performing online. There's no people there. I don't, right. I don't like that. Or there's people talking to me and I've got other things to do. Like I can't, mm -hmm. I can't deal with that. So right. I think it's this understanding that you need to be yourself because I'd also done my first couple of Twitch streams of 45 minute. I do my show. I tell my stage stories. This is how we do it. But all of a sudden I'm getting all of these new questions and all of this content is coming out of this that I had not planned. I was like, I didn't plan on talking about that at all. Yeah. How did we do this for four hours? Um, having to be yourself because you can't make maintain a stage persona for like yeah. 15 hours a week with people yeah. and having to uh, really engage with the chat and get to know the people in the community. And I think that's also when you're asking for specific timelines of our mm -hmm. trajectory as a community, 
that's also tough because it's not everybody who is able to go through those those steps so quickly and maybe mm -hmm. it's also because it's not 2020 anymore so you're now right. competing with all of these other uh things that are in people's lives mm -hmm. um but really having an interest in what everybody else is doing is key and mm -hmm. being willing to to form friendships with people who i mean we could call fans but these people have spent hundreds of hours with me so they're absolutely yeah. friends who I know mm -hmm. how they're feeling this week. I know how their job's going. We spend mm -hmm. time on Discord outside. They're with me on Patreon for all of the studio sessions and things. Mm -hmm. Like it's a lot of time spent, like it's a huge time commitment. Uh, but yep. would I change it? Absolutely not. Yeah, I mean, uh, so is that is that your typical schedule? You do 15 hours a week uh, for the most part? Um, I mean, it varies drastically. Okay. I go live three times a week because that's okay. also kind of partnership. They're expecting you to be live three times gotcha. a week. This mm -hmm. week it's four and okay. sometimes it'll vary. I try to keep it to three hours, but typically it's yeah. usually four to five. Wow. And that's not even intended to be that way. Um, yeah. so really, it really depends. It depends on what kind of events you're getting involved in. And I mean, there's, there's tons, there's tons of, mm -hmm. I mean, we've got two raid trains coming up next week. Uh, Talk I've got it. my own community raid train on Saturday. So you end up What's doing a, a lot train? of bonus stuff. Yeah. What's a raid train? Oh, I think that that's why I love Twitch <laughs> so much is because when I think about my way of being a musician is and also a teacher like you want to share this with everybody all the time mm -hmm. and when you see people who are doing great things you want to share that with people and why I was able I think to build something so quickly in this space as opposed to other spaces is because I finished my show mm -hmm. and then today we took 150 people and we just dropped them in another stream you just mm -hmm. press one button as soon as you finish and then everybody appears in this new place and you just say hey I'm bringing you to see this thing that I love Love. I mm -hmm. think that you'll love it too. And so having that on the receiving end, I think our largest raid to date was 1700 people just all of a sudden, just wow. kicking down the door saying <laughs> hi, nice music. You're like, Oh, yeah. I'm happy that you're nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, right, right. Wow, crazy. <laughs> I'm happy about that. So raid trains, um, this mm -hmm. Saturday, we're featuring 30 streamers from my community. Cool. And we just plan a schedule like a music festival, right? Nice. Except at the end of your set, you're going to raid into the next streamer and just keep that going all day. So you bring that whole audience with you. They don't have to press any buttons, just making sure the streamers press the raid button and you've got 16 hours worth of content. Wow. So cool. I like that you compare it to a festival uh, when mm -hmm. you're when done with this set and it's like someone on stage saying, hey, go check out my friend on the next stage over. And then everybody migrates over to that stage uh, virtually and you bring them over. Uh, that's cool. Um, you mentioned earlier channel point redeems. What does that hmm. mean? So when we're speaking again about the gamification of watching things, when yeah. somebody clicks onto Instagram, they can't really impact the stream. What they can do is say something in the chat, which is normally mm -hmm. so small that it's hard to keep up with as a streamer. They can right. request to join, which you should probably, for the most part, ignore. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't let people join your don't stream let people, yeah. unless you've planned it that way. Sure. But otherwise, they don't impact the content. And people love to have a say on what's going on. And when they stay on Twitch, mm -hmm. the longer they stay and watch, the more channel points they collect. And so when mm. you think about playing games, you want to collect as many points as possible. Oh, so wow. people will be at every single stream to collect as many points as <laughs> possible. And once you hit that affiliate status, you hit all yeah. those kind of little benchmarkers to be able to monetize your channel, then you unlock the ability to have channel points on your channel. And you get cool. to decide what you do with that. They in my stream can decide which instruments I'm going to play. They can impact the color of the lights in the room. How do They're, they I mean, do the that? Sky's Talk the to limit. me like, yeah, how, how do they impact this kind of stuff? Uh, well, a lot of it can be manual if that's okay. easier for you. So for a long time, when they wanted to change the lights, uh, an alert would pop up that somebody wants to change the color of the lights, what color they want them. I would press my little remote and do mm. that. Uh, but I've been working this month on automating that. So being able to have a bot that's going to determine whatever information has been gathered from Twitch and change the lights for me. So I don't oh have to press a little remote anymore, <laughs> but that's like super advanced. Like you don't have yeah. to do that right yeah, away. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. be like your little LED remote. It's fine. Sure. <laughs> Everybody loves it. 
Um, cool. But normally it's just um, them pressing a button. You see what it is you want. Somebody wants me to add bongos to the loop. We add bongos to the loop and it lets mm. them decide what was going to be done in the stream next. So, And how is really that like different that. from just someone in the chat saying, turn the lights green, play the bongos next? Because you will have a lot of people pop by who demand random things. Uh -huh. <laughs> so sometimes you do have to put up those boundaries, mm. <laughs> uh, which is, I think, another tough thing to learn as, okay. as somebody doing this full time professionally is where where the boundaries are, because now all of a sudden you do have hundreds of people pulling at you all mm. of the time and they're able to write. They have that direct line to you yep. countless hours in the week. Um, so the channel point is that way of saying, hey, you spent this amount of time with me. Thank you. Uh, now you can change the lights. Cool. And so when, <laughs> um, what, just paint a picture for me of, of how that, so for people that maybe have never seen a Twitch stream in their entire life and this is, mm -hmm. they, they don't really know what it looks like. Um, you know, I watched a few of your replays. Um, thank you for keeping those replays up. I know a lot, a lot of streamers, you know, don't necessarily keep the replays up, but you know, there's things flying over the screen at all times and there's different like dinosaurs <laughs> that are hugging that are popping up on the screen. And there's like little things, di big dino dinosaurs roaring. And then there's other little icons and <laughs> things that are flying all over the screen and words popping up here and there. There's a ticker on the bottom with some dollar amounts that I didn't really understand what was going on there. There's a, so it's like, it, it seems like chaotic if you mm -hmm. just go to this thing and meanwhile you're in the center talking and then playing music while all this is like <laughs> this chaos is happening all around you so like uh organize that chaos for me a little bit mm -hmm. in, in um also helping us understand these levels of participation uh you know with the people that have a little bit more access to you or the ability to enhance gamify change mm -hmm. uh how you're going to function on the stream oh certainly and i think that that was I, the the biggest thing that jarred me in moving to this new platform was all of the things that were happening and i felt so overwhelmed the first time that i'd done that the one thing that i wish that i had done before i started on twitch was understand open broadcasting software I wish that I had OBS. learned a little bit mm -hmm. about that before I'd just gone live with my cell phone sure. because the things popping up on the screen and the donations that are going by on a ticker, that's kind of, again, that thing that's expected in the culture of the platform. Sure. You go anywhere, you're going to see people rewarded for these actions. So all those mm -hmm. things you see popping up is, again, I'm in, not in control of any of those things. When you see things flying up through through the screen those little dinos uh, hugging each other uh those are our channel emotes so when somebody pays that five dollar subscription they're able to use all the little art that we have on our channel wherever cool. they go on twitch cool. um when they're flying up that's a widget and you can set up tons of different kinds of widgets depending on whatever software you're using mm. uh we're stream elements partners so when you're mm -hmm. seeing that fly up it's a it's an emote explosion that's just flying through and that's just people using emotes in the chat so whatever they mm. put in the chat if it's an image the bot's going to collect that and share that on my stream just to thank wow. them for participating, putting something in the chat. Uh, donation tickers, just mind blowing to me that anybody would donate, even if we know that we're constantly trying to crowdfund for albums and videos yeah. and everything else that we do. It's still shocking when somebody just says, here's five dollars. <laughs> and how do <laughs> they donate to you? I still can't believe that. Yeah. Is it through bits, the Twitch's internal uh tipping system or, or how, how do they donate? Um, both ways. So the ways that you're seeing on all other platforms and people are PayPaling or, okay. or people have uh, coffee and things set up, you decide yep. how it is you want to accept those donations. Uh -huh. Ours is just through stream elements. They got a tip uh -huh. page, people PayPal through that and, and cool. that shows up that way, but people also cheer bits and that's just kind of the Twitch internal currency. It's another way gotcha. that you can support the stream and, and support mm -hmm. all the stream upgrades and things like that. But yeah, all those alerts I mean, and the screaming dinosaurs and everything yeah. else you see it's rewarding people for following and subscribing and cheering and mm. donating and, and that's what's things. so cool it's like i i do love that about uh twitch is that you know uh yeah you can enhance your experience as a user uh by paying a little bit to uh to but you're paying to the creator to the streamer um to be a deeper member of the community 
mm-hmm. and you can enhance that experience um, as you subscribe. And then you see like this little shout out that pops up on the screen or now you get the emotes and now you're part of that tribe, you're part of the community uh, where you can use your custom, use, uh, like these animations um, that are customized just for your channel and, and your stream. Yes. Um, and you mentioned that you you use the platform Stream Elements. Uh, now, just mm-hmm. to, to clarify, that's not uh, directly connected to Twitch. This is a third party platform that integrates, and so people can donate through Stream Elements or uh, right, and then and then yes. it, it, it yeah. does integrate with Twitch that way. Yeah, and collecting all of cool. those widgets, so all of the things that you see that are animated, yes. that is the bot Stream Elements that's collecting all of that data and just making that happen automatically on the stream. Fortunately, cool. I don't need to collect all the emotes myself and make them pop up. It's, it's <laughs> it so very crazy. Weird. Yeah, how automated that really is. And then like, I, I know for people that are like you who are so um, used to it and, are, and you're so deep into it, uh, it, it might be taken for granted at times of just like how automated all of this is. But for people that don't really do this much or maybe have only live streamed on on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, and then they come in and they like see how automated this process is, it's like the reason that so many people can make livings doing this on Twitch um, is because it has been in uh, there is that encouragement to deepen your level of of engagement and community. and it you're rewarded for that, um, both rewarded as the creator, but also as the participant, as the viewer, uh, for participating in a financial uh, in a, in a deeper way. So um, now, getting back to the subs thing, you mentioned that um, if somebody subscribes uh, to you, it's it's five dollars, and that's kind of set up by Twitch via Amazon or something, I believe. Um, and do you share like is that public like how many how many dinosaurs are in that bowl right now how many subscribers uh do you have i would have to check the back end (laughs) but there's definitely a few hundred in there right now and people share in the form of leaderboards so you can typically click on the chat of Mm. any stream and you can normally see all of the all of the top 10 um, gift uh, subscribers. So people who gift to the channel, Uh, you Mm. can also see the top cheerers. So how many bits people have cheered uh, Mm. and people can set that up daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, You can Mm. see people sometimes using the daily format if they're doing special subathons, they call them trying to raise money by Mm. um, extending stream times and things like that. There's a lot of creative things that people have done to generate revenue in those spaces Uh um but it's it's a pretty public way of making a living i will i will tell everyone that yeah Yeah. (laughs) totally and and um you know i i think like we can all understand and, and a lot of us have experience with you know either busking street performing uh mm-hmm. with an open guitar case or playing a cover gig in a bar with a tip jar out there and that's public too you you can glance into the guitar case and be like oh wow there's 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 a five there oh there's a 20 there and like oh there's mostly ones and oh my gosh there's a few pennies uh okay whatever um you know but uh, this digitizes all of that. And like I was watching, you know, one of your streams and this ticker was going by. I'm like, oh, my gosh, somebody there's a $50 thing flying by that somebody donated ninety three dollars and somebody donated twenty five dollars. Like, wow, like this is actually happening in real time. Like this is significant. Like this is way more than I ever got playing the bar gigs or busking on the Santa Monica promenade, which I did uh, way back in the day. And I was like, this is uh you know, it's it's so fascinating to me because I, I think a lot of us would think that um, it's so much more challenging to get donations or tips or whatever you want to call it via a digital platform like this or live stream where you're not in the physical space and you're not connecting in that way. But it seems like... Um, it's actually because of this gamification and because that they can deepen their uh, engagement and enhance their experience that people really do buy into this. Um, can you can you speak to a little bit of, of that with the Twitch community? Um, and, you know, I, I've noticed that uh, there are people that are members of your community 
There are mm-hmm. people that are members of the broader Twitch community. Uh, and you have fans, you know, inside, outside Twitch. But like, tell me how you think about your community and what, what that really is. I think that I lived too long without them. <laughs> Because I think we've all had those moments in our music career where we thought, you know what, maybe it's just not for me. And I had Mm -hmm. hundreds of those moments in my music career prior to meeting all of these people in this community. And this has truly changed my life. I have Mm -hmm. never been able to make a living as a musician when you're talking about busking i've been there when you're talking about touring touring canada i've done a couple of tours in europe as well constantly losing money just trying so hard to let people know anything about your music and prior to 2020 a goal of mine was to spend more time doing things digitally Mm -hmm. so moving that busking model online wasn't something that i had been inspired to do until all all of the things that happened happened yeah um i think it's it's um like i said a few things to really get used to is making money so publicly mm. and i've always felt um really accountable that way so whenever you're seeing a 93 dollar donation go through i am sometimes on the floor um, yeah. <laughs> but also coming back and saying look we just did this major stream upgrade look, Mm. we just did this project. And I think that that feeling is still different for even anybody who's listening who is on Patreon as well. It's that kind Mm -hmm. of same thing. It's like you're seeing people, they're giving money, they want Mm. to be patrons. What are you doing with that? Mm. And so it's just that same thing, except you're live and they're talking at you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, So I feel that same feeling on both platforms. And then I'm, I'm trying to do the biggest projects that I've done um, because of this overwhelming amount of generosity. So it's not only in these stream upgrades that you're seeing, constantly trying to upgrade, trying to learn new instruments, trying to make the camera quality better, the audio quality better, um, but also trying to do huge projects. We just released Mm -hmm. an album. We just Mm -hmm. released a six music video series. Mm -hmm. So you're feeling... Uh, extremely accountable and there's also that struggle of sometimes uh, I tell people all the time it's like don't come here and make jokes about taking out a bank loan for a donation don't don't make jo- it's like I, you, you can't joke about that mm. um, everybody knows like my rule is you have to be financially well and I think that that was a, a, a source of guilt for a long time when I'd started streaming and people were giving five dollars then people were giving a hundred dollars and people were just being so overly generous and then you're trying to keep in mind how much are people spending on some concert tickets to go to a stadium Right. right. Like there's right. there's got to be uh, some room for you. Um, sometimes we can look to our inspirations and say, well, they deserve to have three thousand dollars per ticket. Mm. And for me, somebody giving me twenty dollars in the beginning was enough to just knock me over because I couldn't believe like what? OK, what can I do for you? Like I can I can sing you a song like I can write you a song like what? <laughs> what can I do for this twenty dollars? Yeah. And so you're kind of on the cusp of burnout for a while. Mm. So there's a lot of things to get used to and you move move into this space, but it's entirely life changing. How do you get over that uh, sense of obligation or you you called it accountable accountability uh, or that mm-hmm. that feeling that you you need to uh, remain accountable to these people, your patrons, the people that are donating or supporting you or anything like that, or speak to the sense of maybe you don't or like talked about where you're at now and what that means to you and just how mm. to refocus the conversation around that initially my response to your question was well i'm gonna have to listen to the next podcast ari because i don't <laughs> know the answer yeah. uh, to that and again because these friends have spent so many hours with me they know me so well like i'm about to take a holiday break which involves me missing three streams mm. and already they're like you should take a longer break like you need yeah. to calm down yeah <laughs> because i've just been working on overdrive since all of this has happened because it's just that it it feels like it's my shot 
right? It feels mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. is, I have to, I just have to keep going like that, that eight and a half hour stream, the mm -hmm. seven and a half hour streams they have been those moments where I did not take a break. Mm -hmm. I just sang for the duration of those hours. Cause you're like, oh my gosh. thousands of people are seeing me for the first time. This is my shot. Like I don't need to be right. a human. I need to be mm -hmm. a musician right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, that overwhelming generosity, like spending decades, I've been, I've been doing this professionally for over 15 years, mm -hmm. um, spending all that time, like, and, and sometimes it feels like you're literally begging. And, um, that was, that was so, so hard. And now I'm just going live and I'm having fun and I'm learning new things. And I feel like I'm a significantly better musician and I get the chance to, to connect with people like there's so many so many good things that are happening and then somebody's giving me money i'm like mm. things i i already feel too fortunate why mm. are you and, and and that immediate response is normally for me to yell at them i'm like you shouldn't be yelling at people who are doing nice things i don't think <laughs> so i don't really know how to tackle that emotion that's still mm. something that i'm probably going to be working on and, and learning for a very long time so you still even now feel obligated that when somebody tips you or pays or buys emotes or subscribes or all of that stuff uh donates that you need to do something for that person i do and you'll meet a lot mm. of people on your journey that insist that you don't and okay. um those people are tiny little angels <laughs> who i appreciate so much but even when you're seeing sometimes those donations going by and things like that, what a lot of people do in the Twitch music community is kind of exchange that money for a song request. Like we are kind of a little bit of a jukebox. So mm. a lot of us use this streamer song list bot that was developed for these incredible, incredible um, musicians uh, by their moderator created this this way of automating those those song requests. So we have a queue, we've got song lists. Sometimes you'll mm -hmm. find people with thousands of songs in their song lists. Wow. Um, I just I just peeked over two hundred and fifty, and I'm like, wow, that's so many songs. I've that never known so many that songs. many songs. <laughs> but you will you'll find people sometimes four or five thousand songs in their song list, and people can wow. just scroll through and, and request. So there's always that moment and if you're ever joining me live i will be like what song am i playing you when someone's <laughs> trying to be nice yeah because there is that immediate immediate response that you want to do something to to reciprocate that kindness and i've found that i'm, I'm quite hard on myself that's always mm -hmm. been the case but um it's very hard when people are being this kind for this long mm -hmm. and you're still wondering like why are you with me like you've been with me some of you for two and a half years why why are you doing this? Well, like, cause I, we like it here. <laughs> yeah, yes. And I'm glad you finished with that. Cause I like, you're not being, uh, you're not being fair to yourself or, or understanding your value. Like they're there because they like it. They, they, you are providing them with a space, a community space, and they feel welcomed. You have the sign there that says you are welcome here. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not there doing you favors. And I think that's the thing that I, I you know, uh, it's important to remember is this like you are providing value to their lives like they are here because you are you are enhancing their lives they feel a sense of belonging and community they feel connected to you and and also they're there because they they love your music they love your personality mm -hmm. they feel welcomed and you do a really good job of making people feel seen and sometimes that's all they really need. They need to be seen and you see them. And so I I, I mean, I would, this is not going to be a therapy session, but I would encourage you <laughs> it <laughs> to just turn like, into that and I appreciate yeah, to, to, it. To I'm remember, it. yeah, <laughs> to remember your value. It's just like you you don't need to uh think that that when they give you donations that they're they're that you're obligated to them or anything like that it's like they're doing that because they genuinely are appreciative of what you are providing in their lives and that you are giving this space to them they could be watching they could be binging white lotus it's a great tv show right now but they're not they're choosing to spend the time with you like you know they could be doing anything uh, but they're spending the time here because they they feel welcomed and, and you have created the space for them. So it's like, I, you know, I, I which I know is already a, so much, but I, yep. I think that that's one thing that a lot of people who are going to try this out for the first time and and start to build their their community online is 
um, I know a lot of people reach out to me as they're starting because they're like, people are being too nice and I don't know how to handle it. I'm like, I don't know how to handle it either. So you're coming to the, <laughs> the place with doesn't have any advice for you. Yeah. Um, so that is another feeling that's just very hard. And I, I don't know if it's necessarily like I feel withholden that like I have to do something for them and that's an expectation. It's mm. It's more that... I think we're so used to as independent artists giving and giving and giving and that was always um, kind of an expectation when you're a young artist. I think back mm -hmm. to my teenage days and the battles of the bands and the pay to play mm -hmm. shows that you Ugh. do and you're just kind of brought up into this terrible culture. So when things mm -hmm. are working the way that they should and to any other business, people pay for a service and you're like, cool, that's a business transaction. Yes. But that wasn't the way that we experienced that for so long right and i right. think that's wholly unfair to artists and mm. if you're ever going through this moment in your career too just hit me up because i i know <laughs> I, I don't have advice for you yet but i can at least say you're not alone in that feeling <laughs> totally and that's an important thing to remember is that this has been ingrained in us and we have been trained uh from very early mm. on when we weren't paid or for our work and uh hadn't been paid for uh, our shows or had to go, the money was flowing the other way, which is a whole other topic that should not be happening. The pay to play thing where it's like, oh, let me, please, can I pay you to get on your stage and sell tickets mm -hmm. to your event that you should be paying me for because I'm doing a, a service here for you and for people and bringing people to drink the alcohol at your bar that I don't get any, a cut of those sales from, but you're somehow, you're justifying taking 20% of my merch and the tickets, what? And, and then we're just expected to be like, say thank you very much and let me give you some more money. Um, and like, you know, so it's like, yeah, I, I understand that that's a hard pattern to break. And um, eventually we get to the point where where we realize our value and you don't stand for that stuff anymore. And that's, that's important. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's immense humility that comes along with that. And uh, it's, you know, I appreciate also hearing that you, you you are humble and you still are and you you've maintained that humility sometimes maybe to a fault but to the, the <laughs> sense where <laughs> but but like you know that's also why people love you and that's also why your your community and your your audience and your supporters and your friends as you call them do love you um you mentioned a little while back and I want to touch on it because I think it it is part of this discussion um moderators and you mm. have moderators can you talk about who what that mean? What is a moderator? Who your moderators are? Where they come from? How that whole system works? Oh, certainly, and I know we're doing this so rapid fire. We could probably talk about Twitch in like a fourteen week course. Yes. Um, but when it comes <laughs> to moderation, I think it's so important to be able to sometimes disconnect from the chat if you are performing and know that everybody is still safe in that space mm. and i wish that that was built into more live stream platforms like if i'm on facebook and instagram i don't have people there who can go and delete comments when they're inappropriate right. if you're on youtube and twitch then you have the opportunity to assign people in the chat to moderate the chat make sure everybody's feeling safe yes. and that can also um, lead to them doing so many things for you that i never thought possible Possible. So mm -hmm. when I'd first brought them on, it was just to delete comments and being a woman on the internet, I think we know uh, what kind of comments can sometimes come through. So me feeling safe, but uh, for the most part, I really wanted everybody in the community to feel safe. Mm. And something that was important to me being socially anxious and um, knowing how uncomfortable it is to enter a new space, having somebody to say hi. And so having these people just in the beginning that anybody who's a new chatter, just say hi, ask mm. them how they're doing. How powerful cool. is that, that you're not yeah. saying hi to avoid and the musician's busy singing so they can't say hi either. And then they're clicking yes. away and going somewhere where they feel safer to say hi. Mm. They can also create commands so you can have different bots again, automate things, links to your music, links cool. to your other socials, links yep. to your Patreon and your Discord. Uh, places where it's kind of like that clubhouse, the the, the fan sure. space where everybody hangs it in your Discord server, sure. 
Patreon, where hopefully they're going to get a bunch of extra perks outside of stream. Sure. Um, but automating all of that through the bot, they do a great job of that. And my moderators, we have moderators here in Canada, uh, the States, Brazil, we have some in the UK, uh, some in the Middle East. I mean, you just wow. got people who you find through the whole world that just come through. And it's really nice that they're all in different time zones as well, because then mm. when we're going to sleep here, the Discord is still kind of safe because there's somebody who's awake on the other side of the world wow. making sure that nothing bad is happening in, in those spaces. And are these people on your payroll or where do they, did you interview for these positions? Like wh who are these moderators? I think it changed, like whoever you were to talk to, it's completely different. Okay. When it comes to independent musicians, the moderators who are there, they just want to help. And some of my moderators are our number one donors. So I'm like, Amazing. I could oh, pay, you. pay you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're paying you to, to be part of me. Yeah, it's great. They just yeah. love to be a part of seeing the project take off. And so yeah. I have tried awesome. my darndest to pay mm -hmm. when we've done new launches in the merch store. I had to be mm -hmm. so sneaky and I tried to figure out how to send them PayPal donations and things so that they could <laughs> at least just go buy some merch. If they were yeah. here, I would have given them like half of my house because of right. who I am. <laughs> um, but I can't because they're on the other yeah. side of the world for now when they when sure. they visit and I'm here like here's a car full of presents. Um, but they all were furious with me because I found that sneaky way of, of sending them sending them little yeah. little donations so for merch. So it's going to change depending on whoever you're talking to. But uh, sometimes you can also moderate for people. So some of mm -hmm. my moderators are fellow streamers. So you go cool. and you spend time kind of paying that back. And that's Love how a lot it. of people do that as well. There's lots mm -hmm. of ways that you can make it work and make sure that you and your community are safe when you're alive. That's great. Um, yeah, it, it does feel like a community. And it's like fans that sell merch for their favorite artists at shows. And it's like they're not getting they're not doing that because they're getting paid to do that. It's because they love the artist. They want to be there. And, you know, maybe the artist will, like, you know, put them on the list to get into the concert for free or whatever. Um, but then they typically, at least all my merch sellers, they're like, all right, here's the numbers. And uh, and I'm like, oh, let me let me give you a t-shirt or a record. We're like, oh, I already bought one. And they, they're like, <laughs> literally, they're, they're there to sell your merch and they just buy all the merch for themselves too and then sell it for other people. It's like, what? No, let me give it to you. They're like, no, 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 no I, I, wanna, I wanna support. I'm like, yeah, but you just work for me for the last five hours. They're like, yeah, well, I love it. Thank you. And I'm like, okay. Cool, angels. I'm not going to argue. <laughs> angels. <laughs> you know, right, <Yeah>. angels. Um, <laughs> I, lastly, I, I want to touch on, um, because, you know, we are, uh, you know, officially the pandemic uh, supposedly is over, um, and uh, says, says the people in power. But it's like, you know, we are still, we're almost three years past the start of, of uh, COVID. And, um, you know, you got started around that time, but you're still going. And and I'm curious mm -hmm. what you have noticed has been the difference from when everyone was at home and there was nothing else to do when you first got started in May of 2020 to now where, you know, uh, kind of end of 2022, beginning of 2023, um, have you noticed a massive drop in uh, the engagement and viewership as, as the world opens back up? Or have you noticed that your subs and followers and engagement and viewership is actually continuing to grow? I think that it's always been in waves. And okay. sometimes it has to do with different lockdowns in different areas. And I mean, technically, when I'd started in May, we had opened back up here in my city pretty significantly for the summer. Okay. And um, I, I think there's always the lull in the summer because it's okay. nice outside. But it's been picking back up again because it's starting to get colder. More people are heading over. But also just the state of it being so international. Uh, it's cold here, but it's summer down south so it's just very gotcha. <laughs> very strange yeah. um time zones and everything else so i think the things that's kind of impacted my schedule the most is having so many friends now in the europe area mm -hmm. so i'm streaming a lot earlier than i would have when i started i would have been doing okay. more evenings but now cool. i mean this morning i was streaming at 9 a.m wow. trying to sing at nine o'clock in the morning but this, <laughs> that works really well for all of our yeah. friends on on the other side of the world so I think that we're still going to be dealing with those fluctuations, but mm -hmm. 
there's still so many people on the internet all day long and you you see yeah. a lot of the people that spend a lot of time on twitch working from home still mm -hmm. so even if things mm -hmm. are opening up and people are doing things in the evenings and weekends mm -hmm. a lot of people spend time during the day uh hanging out on twitch we call it the work lurk that a lot of people do is they'll just be with you and they're doing their things while you're playing mm -hmm. music for them in the background Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, all of these little things, knowing that it's going to impact. So diversifying your revenue, if you're mm -hmm. going to put all your eggs in one basket, never doing that. Of course, yeah. there's, there's quieter months on Twitch. Um, sure. so I think Patreon was huge. And then also uh, having the merch store for anybody who's wanting to order and that's working internationally. And now we have merch giveaways that happen live on stream that the community awesome. can gift merch from the store in the chat. Like there's lots of ways that you can keep working on, on building the community and, and still having revenue as a musician mm. to, to keep funding all of the projects you're working on. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, uh, you mentioned Patreon as like, you know, everything that you, we've been talking about, it's like, you mentioned burnout at the beginning and uh, mm -hmm. that's all, that's what I'm thinking about is it's like, well, if the money is only really coming while it, you're streaming from all mm -hmm. of these things that we've talked about so far, how do you maintain this if you want to take a break? But, but Patreon, I guess, is the way that you're really maintaining it because that is a monthly subscription regardless if you are uh streaming or not these are your supporters and you can you know there's some some extra you know benefits i suppose that that you're offering them um over there but for the most part they're just there because they love you and want to support you there um yeah. we did have a question uh from daniel ray hillsinger he he was saying uh does twitch partnership accommodate for illness and or vacation uh you mentioned that Twitch partnership program wants you to be streaming three times mm -hmm. a week. And so I think that's what he's in reference to. Which like, is a you know, great question. Yeah. If you want to go on a month, you know, break or take a break, like yeah. how does that work? Yeah. So, I mean, there's nobody watching to make sure that you're live three days okay. a week, unless you're trying to apply for partnership mm -hmm. or you're trying to apply to have a front page feature. Like if you want certain certain perks that come with partnership, then just making sure you're consistent with your streaming. Mm -hmm. When I say, yes, I can apply for partnership with 75 average viewers and maintaining three streams a week for, mm -hmm. for 30 days, they look back at the last few months and they want to mm -hmm. make sure that you're consistent about it. So I was working really hard to hit that so that I mm -hmm. wouldn't have to worry so much. Don't have to worry about it. I'm not applying for anything else. Mm -hmm. um, but as I was doing my album release in October, I wanted to make sure I had consistent streams beforehand because then I was requesting to have some features as we were launching the new album. Mm -hmm. So once you're partnered, you don't really have to worry about maintaining that. Uh, and honestly, cool. <laughs> forever, you don't really have to worry about maintaining that. Uh, okay. A lot of th people think that partner is like the end of the journey and like you're successful and you're right. done um, <laughs> nothing changes really you just got a check mark next to your name and you still sure. have to work just as hard so take breaks when you need them and somebody mm. who's chronically ill as well there's a lot of streamers who who deal with chronic illness and it can be a great mm. way of of um, being able to supplement that income when you're feeling well so never feel like you need to burn out to even if you are applying for partner it's not worth not worth burning now. That's great. Very well put. Um, and uh, right. So there's no boss. You know, you are an independent contractor. Twitch doesn't mm -hmm. have you as a W2 to employee. You're not an employee of the company. It's like you can yeah. stream whenever you want. You don't have to. They're not going to rip your partnership away if you take yeah. a month off or anything like that. For sure. Um, yeah. And and I guess I did. I didn't, I don't know if I, you answered this question or I asked it at the beginning. We talked about the dinosaurs in the jar. Why dinosaurs? Where does this come from? <laughs> <laughs> And that's another question that people usually want to get into, like how to figure out your brand, how to figure yeah. out what your thing is. And sometimes it can just be a thing that you love and that you end up talking about anyways. Uh, sometimes it can be a thing that you did on the internet. And so as we were talking about everyone streaming at the beginning of lockdown, mm -hmm. the world was like a beautiful place for two weeks. I don't know if we all remember that, like March yeah. 2020 and everyone's yeah. like, oh, we're all best friends. We're going to get through this together. I'm like, I'm 
I'm loving this yeah. world. Thank you. Please yep. continue. Two weeks later, absolutely not like that at all anymore. And I was like, oh, I can't handle being online right now. But this is only, uh, I, uh, this is our only way of connecting with anybody. Like I am yeah, in my yeah, house yeah. right now and I have to be on the internet and it's a terrible, cruel place. So I'm going to put on my inflatable dinosaur costume and vacuum the house. And I'm going <laughs> to post that. And I had a bunch of colleagues and students who I'd been connected with just like, thank you. That made my day. It was very funny to watch you vacuum your house in a dinosaur costume. And that just kind of kept coming up on streams, people joking mm -hmm. about, oh, I'm sure it's not really her in the costume. She's going to have to prove it. You know, it all it all just kind of keeps building the hype towards is she in the dinosaur costume or not? And I said, you know mm -hmm. what? If we hit this crazy milestone, we're never going to hit. I'm going to play music in a dinosaur costume. And then we hit the milestone Forest. and then just everything just <laughs> became about dinosaurs. So a yeah. lot of the dinosaurs you even see around me, like I did not purchase any of these dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. they just wow. keep appearing oh in gosh. places. And honestly, I did. I bought a jar of a hundred dinosaurs when I, when I'd started, I was like, I just want all of you. I was going to write people's names on them yeah. and then one stream. And that was just history. So now we actually refill this once a month, this crazy bowl incredible and you said you didn't yeah. purchase these dinosaurs who did um your, your one supporters? thing that was your, a, your a shock yeah one thing that was a shock was people requesting a p.o box which i'd never oh. needed before in my wow. life wow but because we'd been making art on Sundays, we have a new prompt and we mm. all make art together and so sometimes i'll do a five minute sketch just while we're while all making art and that was cool. how I started streaming, making crafts together. Mm. Uh, people wanted to mail me their art. And so I have a bulletin board over here of, mm -hmm. of some art that's mailed to me. And I was like, oh, well, that, I like that concept. But then people started sending things mm. to the P.O. box. And wow. that's still something that's um, a, a shock every single time. So, yeah, a lot of so uh, cool. crazy dinosaur um items i don't even know what word to use <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's so cool um john nagaki asks um how long does the affiliate application approval process take um do you know about mm. uh for like you've applied for these various levels i'm assuming yeah. um and do you, are they instant do they take months weeks do you know how that process works partner can take weeks or months to hear back but i'm okay. surprised because i think that affiliate was almost instantaneous so maybe uh, you want to check out possibly the tax documents just because i know as soon as you hit affiliate you hit the the milestones and it'll pop up saying you're invited to be an affiliate you have to fill mm. out some documents just to confirm all of that uh, which okay. was confusing as somebody internationally outside of the states i'm like i don't know what any of these words mean right but i figured it out <laughs> which was great but that's good oh, it should be and if you haven't heard back you did that john then i'd send them a message just to say yeah. hey i think my application hasn't gone through there might have been a glitch possibly cool cool yeah um nice uh sam jr asks uh when you're when you perform live and you switch uh wait, wait, wait. when you're performing live do you switch from camera to camera while playing the music how does that work i how sure do really? and so uh over here you're seeing whenever i was uh, switching cameras i was reaching uh -huh. over here so i've got a stream deck and mm -hmm. this was the only reason why i got the stream deck originally is because my hands are busy playing music but i also right. wanted the camera to move so i'm ever playing something like super distortion like rock and roll and i want it to go crazy oh uh, mm -hmm. everybody gets uh, really excited because then we put on the wowie cam oh it's because i'd already switched cameras there you go. <laughs> oh. oh, it's automatic. It just keeps going. It's it's no like, hands. oh, wowie, no, no hands. hands. Look yeah. at you. So there's okay. some really cool Crazy. things you could do with the stream deck from cool. uh, timing scenes to also multi-action events. So if I wow. want a bunch of things to happen at once, I just press a button um, and it takes, it takes some work to set up. But yeah. uh, of all of the streaming softwares I've had to deal with, the Stream Deck software was the nicest. So oh, okay. I think you, nice. you got this. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice to have everything a button away, but even you're mm -hmm. talking about all of the overlays and things that can pop up. Like right mm -hmm. now, I've just got my, my recording scene. So sometimes I'll record a lot of YouTube content while we're live, just trying to uh -huh. get stuff done. Cool. But normally it's going to have all the widgets and the event list and the banners and nothing's happening right now because there's nobody triggering anything on right. Twitch. But it would typically look like that. 
Cool. And for those of you just listening, I see a now playing box in the top mm-hmm. right hand corner. And I did see on your streams, it's like, that's so cool that when you when you are playing a song, you pop up there. So if someone's like, oh, I'm going to go check this out on Spotify or something, they know what they're looking for and they can go find that. Um, yeah. And that's I'm, automated as well with that streamer uh, song list bot that we were talking about. So as soon as people wow. put things in the queue, then whatever I'm playing is going to appear in that in that corner. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> um, so cool. And what what is the looping pedal that you're using? Uh, so this is the Boss RC300. That's what I, I use. I worked with the 30. Oh, nice. I worked yeah. with the 30 and I found, I found um, just so many issues, especially with the timing. The RC300 has been so good, especially mm-hmm. sometimes I'm looping like 10, 15 different instruments into it. Yep. So it's been very fun. Yeah, and you get those three uh, separate tracks, channels, I guess, that you can kind of bring stuff in and out of, and and that's great. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Cool. Um, nice. Well, uh, let's see here. Uh, cool. Um, well, Danielle, thank you so much for, for taking the time with us today. This has been uh, so helpful and uh, really appreciate um, all of the wisdom that you've brought and to this, you know, the Twitch and live streaming in general, I mean, uh, your success story, and this is something that you have cracked, but I think my biggest takeaway was that um, it took tenacity, it took uh, a whole new skill set that uh, you had to work at learning, uh, a whole new, it seemed like a brand new language, essentially, um, <laughs> and you really mastered it, but it was from setting that schedule up and 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 being dedicated and uh, disciplined that you are going to maintain it and you just kind of keep trucking along and and really that the community can be so wonderful and supportive and I think a lot of us are scared by people on the internet, rightfully so, um, mm-hmm. but it can also be a very wonderful and supportive place and I love that you highlighted that so much today. Um, that it's not just negative and, and trolls and, and all of that stuff. Um, so I have one final question that I ask everyone who comes on the show, and that is, what does it mean to you to make it in the new music business? And I mean, thank you so much for having me, Ari. And it's true. I, I think the internet can be a scary place. And just please know, even even in a couple of moments when I'm mentioning some things we can deal with when we're in mm-hmm. these online spaces, that the Twitch music community is like 98% very wholesome. And it's just <laughs> a, a few situations that you'll find yourself in that you're going to have a whole community of people to drown out any any negativity or any people sure. kind of flying through your chat. Um, but what does it mean to make it? And that's so complex because I think a lot of what I deal with working with my students in the Music Industry Arts program is the amount of mental health issues that come out of working in these cultural industries, the way that Mm. we do, the highs and the lows, and we see the impact on ourselves, on our friends, on, on everybody kind of going through this wild career. And I think there's been these moments, uh, the biggest stream we had, we had 19,000 concurrent viewers, 800,000 wow. unique viewers saw that stream that day. And that was the oh day gosh. that I went seven and a half hours, <laughs> every single piece of music I could ever play, welcoming in everybody. I think I was exhausted for three straight days after that. Wow. Telling yourself in those moments that this is probably the biggest thing I'm ever going to do. And so Mm. you're feeling like, oh, I'm making it in this moment. Mm. But then being okay after that to go back down to 100 people hanging out with you. And that's always going to be the case. You're going to play the biggest festival in town. And then you're going to be back playing at the gelato shop. So I feel like a lot of us have this definition of making it. But I think making it is just being comfortable with the fact that we're going to have these highs and lows, that you're not alone in that journey. And I think a way of making it easier is by really starting to get comfortable with technology. It's really the way of the future for us. And I was always a a musician that never thought I'd do my own sound. I never thought I'd record myself. I had no idea what a DAW meant years ago. And now we're here, we're recording this on Ableton. We're hanging out with Mm -hmm. you. We've got open broadcasting software. We've got all these things around. If I can do it and I stand your technology and it breaks, anybody who's listening can definitely do this. Danielle Allard, thank you so much. This was great. Thanks, Ari.
Today's episode was edited by Maxton Hunter, theme music by Brassroots District, and produced by all the great people at Ari's Take.